which sector of science is advancing significantly and exponentially? The answer is, undoubtedly, AI and robotics. Every new week sets a new benchmark. We all have used Siri or Alexa, though they aren't smart enough. Still, based on your experience, what do you think the smarter AIs would be capable of? Aren't you excited? Well, to keep your excitement awake, we have some more weekly astonishment on behalf of AI and robotics. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and also press the bell icon to never miss an update about artificial intelligence, robotics, and future technology. That being said, let's begin. Adopting a machine learning first attitude can help firms reduce time to market and increase long-term competitiveness. One of the many amazing things we've gained from working with great entrepreneurs throughout the world is that machine learning and artificial intelligence are no longer aspirational technology. I'm not the only one that thinks this way. According to IDC, worldwide investment in AI and cognitive technologies will top $110 billion by 2024, while Gartner expects that by 2024, 75% of businesses will have moved from piloting to operationalizing AI. Most businesses that are born in the cloud have the benefit of being able to begin their digital transformation journey with less technical debt sooner in their life. They may use machine learning to produce accurate projections, enhance their decision-making process, and give value to clients swiftly right out of the gate, creating a culture of innovation and acceleration. Startups are in a great position to use scalable computational power and open source machine learning frameworks to build never-before-seen enterprises. With that in mind, here are four strategies for companies to develop and grow a strategic machine learning first firm. Cloud native firms' go-to-market strategies will be bolstered by quick experimentation, rapid prototyping, and failing rapidly to learn and evolve. Next, Sarcos and RE2 have merged to have robots take on perilous occupations. Sarcos Technology and Robotics Corporation, or Sarcos, announced a merger with RE2 Robotics this week, forming a team focused on developing robots for the aviation, construction, defense, energy, and medical industry. The robotics solutions industry is expanding and diversifying. Some corporations, like Boeing and Aerovironment, are chasing the military market by developing drones and mobile platforms. Others, like iRobot and Samsung, continue to target consumers who want assistance with domestic duties, such as vacuuming. As corporations try to serve certain niches or sectors, the industrial sector is simultaneously fast expanding and atomizing. Some companies, such as Amazon, previously Kiva, Dematic, and Singin, are focusing on the supply chain where humans labor in a regulated setting that is ripe for automation. Others are addressing analogous fields, such as agriculture and industry, where human costs are high and the activity is repetitive enough to benefit from basic automation. Sarcos and RE2 spent their early years focusing on defense projects, but they now want to branch out and work in the industrial sector. They're especially interested in assisting and maybe replacing individuals who operate in unstructured environments. Sarcos makes full-body exoskeletons and robotic arms that may be attached to construction lifts and other mobile devices. The transaction is structured as an acquisition with a cash payment of $30 million and a stock payment of $70 million. Next. Can machine learning ops with a human focus help AI live up to the hype? Over the last few years, the concept of human-centered AI has pervaded the artificial intelligence zeitgeist. That's owed in part to initiatives like Stanford's Institute for Human-Centered AI, HAI, which debuted in 2019. Human-centered AI, on the other hand, is more than a glorified catchphrase or a philosophical framework, according to Dr. Vishal Sikka, founder and CEO of Palo Alto, CA-based VNI Systems, who was also previously CEO of In and serves on an advisory council member at HAI. While it focuses on how AI can increase and enhance human productivity, it's really about helping businesses build and manage better AI. Enterprises want to understand the condition of their AI landscape, how many models they have, what they want to do with them, what the models are supposed to do, and are they doing what they're supposed to do experts said. To that end, the company's recently announced VN H plus AI machine learning ops platform combines a combination of open source tools, proprietary methodologies, and optimizations, and design considerations to provide a foundation for delivering human-centered AI programs to businesses at scale. Machine learning ops engineers can use a consistent user experience to quickly operationalize models regardless of the tools used by data scientists to generate them. They can also plug and play and make decisions on elements without changing the API. VNI's new MLOps platform tackles two fundamental long-standing corporate AI issues, assuring that AI and machine learning paradigms are responsible, explainable, and 
immoral while also complementing rather than replacing human decision making? What are the locations where false positives and false negatives occur? Is it happening more frequently now than it was before we saw the mannequin? Enquires Vishal Sikha, the CEO of Vienna. The MLOps platform lets businesses get more out of AI by speeding up the mannequin pace and throughput on commodity infrastructure. Schneider Electrical, one of the world's top digital manufacturing companies, has equipment in remote locations such as factories, oil fields, and ships that were not connected to the cloud. The platform cut runtime in half and sent optimized fashions to the Sting units. Human-centered AI is a humble AI that aims to improve human judgment and magnify human effort. Next, how ethical AI can be powered by low-code machine learning. Artificial intelligence, AI-based products, and processes are affecting many aspects of human life and business activities in banking, healthcare, marketing, and a variety of other industries due to rapid technological advancement and broad use. Though the accuracy of AI models is an important factor to consider when implementing AI-based products, there may be a compelling need to understand how AI might be made to perform ethically. Accountable AI is a structure that every organization developing software must follow to build customer trust in the transparency, accountability, equity, and safety of any AI solutions implemented. Simultaneously having a development pipeline that can enhance the repeatability of results and manage the lineage of data and machine learning models is a critical aspect of making AI responsible. Low-code machine learning is gaining traction thanks to tools like PyCaret, H2O.AI, and DataRobot, which allow data scientists to execute pre-canned patterns for function engineering, data cleansing, mannequin development, and statistical efficiency comparison. However, patterns around responsible AI that analyze ML models for equality, transparency, explainability, causation, and other factors are frequently missing from these packages. Here we show how to use PyCaret in conjunction with the Microsoft RAI, accountable AI architecture to create an in-depth report that includes mistake assessment, explainability, causality, and counterfactual. The first section is a code tutorial for developers to show how an RAI dashboard can be built. The second half is devoted to a detailed examination of the RAI report. Next, NVIDIA unveils new edge-focused devices, including Isaac Nova Orin. NVIDIA presented Isaac Nova Orin, a computer and sensor structure driven by the company's Jetson AGX Orin technology during its March 2022 GPU know-how convention GTC this week. Isaac Nova Orin, according to NVIDIA, comes with all of the computation and sensor hardware needed to design, manufacture, and test autonomy in autonomous cellular robots, AMRs, which are robots that can sense and move through their environment without being directly supervised by a human. AMRs are used by warehousing and logistics companies, among others, to do tasks that would be risky or impossible for a group of human personnel to complete. AMRs can carry huge loads while dynamically analyzing and responding to their surroundings, assisting with tasks such as identifying, choosing, and transferring goods. Thanks to AI, computing, and a complex network of sensors. According to an IDC survey, over 70% of order fulfillment operations and warehouses that employ AMRs have seen double-digit improvements in KPIs, including cycle time, productivity, and stock effectiveness. Cycle time refers to the amount of time a team is genuinely involved in the production of a product till it is ready for ship. That may explain why, according to Fortune Enterprise Insights, the global AMR market was valued at $1.67 million in 2020 and is expected to grow to $8.7 billion by 2028. Isaac Nova Orin, due later this year, combines two Jetson AGX Orin models to deliver up to 550 tops of energy. Tops stands for trillions of operations per second, and it refers to the number of computing operations or main math problems that a chip can do in a short period. Prospects may now purchase the developer package, which was initially announced by the company in November. Developer kits start at $1,999, and production modules will be available for $300 in the fall of 2022. Next, what do we want from suburban drone delivery in the future? Wing, an alphabet company, has delivered 200,000 drones in Australia and is expanding into Texas. However, watching a drone deliver an apple makes me squirm because it seems like this technology is being used for its purpose rather than for a real valid reason. Other solutions, such as sidewalk robots or self-driving automobiles, exist to solve the last mile or many miles problem. Consumer delivery drones have a position in a larger robotic delivery ecosystem where different types of robots perform diverse functions. Is Wing assisting us in approaching that ecosystem? Wing's long-term business plan 
and how much it is supporting the expense of all of this is unknown. Is this tremendous investment, however, translating into a long-term viable business model? Is using tiny drones that can carry up to 1.2 kilograms of cargo at a time the best method to solve the challenge of getting items to those who need them quickly? Should suburban delivery drones do this function, even if they are capable of doing so? Next, according to a new study, brain-inspired chips are useful for more than AI. Recent research reveals that brain-inspired neuromorphic microchips from IBM and Intel might be beneficial for more than artificial intelligence. They could also be suitable for a class of calculations useful in a wide variety of applications, including medical x-ray analysis and financial economics. Using software programs known as neural networks and hardware known as neuromorphic circuits, scientists have long attempted to imitate how the brain functions. Neuromorphic computing has thus far mostly concentrated on the implementation of neural networks. It was uncertain if this circuitry would be helpful for purposes other than AI. Neuromorphic chips mimic the functions of neurons in a variety of ways, including the ability to do many calculations in parallel. Neuromorphic hardware aspires to combine processors and memory in the same way as biological neurons do. IBM's True North processor had features including spiking and memory and processing unification. Sandia researchers discovered that neuromorphic computing has a quantum edge over conventional computing on a wide range of issues. When it comes to random walks using discrete Markov chains, the advantage may exist. In tests, neuromorphic devices outperformed conventional semiconductors in terms of energy usage and processing time. Instead of a more comprehensive set of activities, neuromorphic circuits depict each random walk as a single spike of activity. The capacity to effectively solve this class of issues has a wide variety of possible applications, including financial market modeling of stocks and up however, I moan cautions that neuromorphic circuits do not indicate that brain-inspired computers can do everything better than standard computers. Next, ground-up glass is now supposedly included in the deep learning toolbox. According to a recent study, ground-up fragments of glass might allow a simple, yet extremely secure approach to encrypting face photos. Face recognition technology has become mainstream, for better or ill. Because of its widespread use, there are growing worries regarding the privacy of face photographs. Software-based cryptography techniques are commonly employed to encrypt facial photos. These rely on the sender and receiver exchanging a secret key to decrypt the contents of a communication. These keys are usually tens of hundreds of bits long. The longer the key, the more secure it is, but it also requires more computational power. However, Given their typical key lengths, quantum computers with sufficient processing power are theoretically capable of breaking contemporary software crypto systems. As a result, scientists are looking into a variety of alternatives to contemporary crypto systems. A simple yet extremely secure optical crypto system for face pictures has been created by scientists in China. Hong Kong, and Singapore. The diffracted light is commonly used in optical technology to turn data into encrypted communications. The new method uses ground-up shards of glass to transfer facial image data. Speckles are bright and dark spots that appear to be randomly spread and are caught by a camera as a secret message. So as you can see, these are the amazing new updates for this week. With that, today's episode of our weekly updates on the newest futuristic technologies and robots comes to the end. Next time, we'll bring you even more exciting robot news. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with us. We'll see you at the next one. Until then, peace.